difficult to get going in the morning after your team gets beaten in the World Cup semi-final, as I'm sure a lot of you are finding. Um, I thought Croatia were worthy winners, to be honest, over uh, 120 minutes last night. They, uh, they're, they're a country that um, have been through a war in the last 30 years, and um, their players kind of reflect that. They, they were tough, they were battle-hardened, they were ruthless at times, um, and they probably exposed relatively soft underbelly of a, of a young team who've, who've done exceptionally well in this tournament um, and probably just found it a step too far. Uh, going to the way I saw the game, Croatia started the game um, by pressing us uh, pretty high up the pitch. Their front three um, pressed uh, really, really intelligently and uh, it was clear from almost the get-go that um, our boys and, and John Stones in particular wasn't going to be allowed to dot, dictate possession, dictate the rhythm of the game um, and that was probably something that at the time didn't seem too too bad um, because England were, uh, were creating a lot of chances the first 20-30 minutes of the game um, but as the game went on um, the fact that they dictated the, the rhythm of the game rather than, than us uh, was, was I thought quite a, quite, um, a key tactical um, aspect of the game. Uh, because they pressed, we had to go along, um, and uh, we that, that paid dividends early on. Um, I think Vida was getting stretched by Sterling in that right channel, um, making runs, runs uh, and stretching them vertically uh, time and time again, and um, we created a lot of chances, we looked dangerous, um, there was a lot of space so it was quite kind of end-to-end -end and there wasn't a huge amount of control which I think for any coach you know, from the sideline would make you a little bit nervous, um, particularly when they've got the quality of players like, uh, like Modric and Rakitic as, uh, as came to the fore later on in the game but at the time you know, England, were, England looked in the ascendancy and uh, you know, let's, be, let's be brutally honest about it, we had chances um, and if Harry Kane scores that, scores that goal uh, instead of hitting the post when he's a couple of yards away on the angle. Um, I think we're talking about England being in the World Cup final now and, and elite sport is uh, is a, about fine margins. There's an awful lot of detail and planning and preparation and many, many factors and variables in there but um, when you put them all together and you, you compare two teams at that level in the semi-final of the World Cup, fine margins are generally what can dictate the result. And um, yeah, it's 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 a case of what might have been if we'd have taken our chances, and you could argue that that's been the case throughout the, the tournament. So yeah, it's definitely something that, that England have got to look on. You know, once once the dust has settled, and and and, and consider um, ways that in which we can we can perhaps improve that because we we, we didn't we didn't we weren't ruthless um, when we could have been. We could have stepped on their throat, um, really gone for the jugular, and um, I think it would have been a different game. As the game went on, Modric and Rakitic started to control the tempo a little bit more and I, I think the, the first half we, we were the better side without a doubt, we created more chances, we looked more dangerous and a 1-0 at half time I think most people were, were pretty happy, um, perhaps with that slight kind of, you know, if you're looking for a negative I guess or if, you, you know, if you're an England fan you, you, you're always expecting a negative around the corner, uh, it was that we were going we to um, regret the fact that we, we hadn't put one of those chances away. Uh, I did see signs in the last five ten minutes of the first half that, that, that worried me a little bit kind of tactically in terms of the flow of the game. Um, again, perhaps Rakitic and, and, and Modric influencing the game getting on, on the ball more, but I actually had more of a problem with the white players, um, Strange in particular, uh, on the left-hand side, having acres of space deep in our half, uh, and Trippier and Walker didn't seem to, uh, and Trippier particularly, didn't seem to gauge... Um, in my opinion, um, the, the the right uh, opportunity to go press, and I, I felt that they, they had too much time to to pick their passes, to pick crosses, uh, and we said before the game that the Mandzukic's aerial power and, and the way that they play um, crosses, we, we needed to stop crosses, and I, I, you know I was a little bit concerned about that. Uh, we, we we did seem to be happy to drop deep and allow them to have the ball. And I think when you invite teams on, um, you know you have to do it for the right reasons and in the last 10 minutes of the first half when you've been in the ascendancy creating chances for me it didn't feel like the right time to do it um, that said they couldn't play through us uh, Jordan Henderson again from a, from a defensive and blocking uh, kind of you know blocking channels and blocking areas to play through and expose us centrally was outstanding again and you know whilst people will wax lyrical about 
Modric and Rakitic, Modric in particular, who you know they're, they're unbelievable players, terrific technical players. I'll come on to the profile of player that they've got compared to perhaps England's profile of player in a bit, but um, Henderson particularly was was key, uh, and the shape and the organisation and credit to Southgate for that. They didn't play through us. We didn't expect them to. We, we you know, I felt that the, the, the width, the wide areas, was where the where the risk was for us. But they didn't play through us. And so when people talk about Modric, you know, dictating the game for a long period of the main part of the game, uh, he didn't get much joy. He, he was probing, he was probing, he was probing, and it felt like there was an, an inevitability about it. Um, but it, it didn't come through through him really. It came from the, the goal came from um, a period where, they, of course, they dominated and probing and created pressure. Um, but they found the right opportunity to, to deliver a great ball. Again, we perhaps should have stopped the cross. Uh, and then Walker's, unfortunately, for, not for the first time in this tournament or in his career, been found wanting in terms of his body shape and his awareness when the ball's delivered into the box. Uh, Perisic has come off his shoulder, um, and uh, not only has Walker not been aware of what's around him, um, but he's also got his feet and uh, his, his body into you know, not a great position because he's, he's almost kind of had to go backwards to go forwards towards the ball, and he didn't come to meet the ball, uh, wasn't aware of Perisic running off his right shoulder. Um, couldn't see the ball, the goal, and the man, and that's you know I've talked about it before. I've talked about it in the Tunisia game. I've talked about it before with Walker, and uh, it's a fundamental flaw, um, of course. And uh, you know under that pressure, and, and you know having had such a terrific, I thought he was, he was excellent all tournament really in, in so many parts of the game. But unfortunately, in one of the fundamental defensive aspects of the game, he's been found wanting, and um, that's you know it sounds cruel, sounds critical. It's just fact. It's just fact. He should have defended that better. Um, and then obviously from that point onwards I, I thought that it looked a little bit like men against boys um, for, for long periods. Um, I think for the first time we were found wanting um, and we panicked, there was, a, there was a degree of panic that set in. Um, and whilst we, we, you know, we, we, we got over it in, in short spells we, we perhaps we, you know, we got a little bit more control and we started to play forward again. Um, the, the main aspect here was just, just simply experience of knowing how to deal with that situation, how to deal with the referee, knowing how to deal with the opposition, um, and and having the confidence with mental and physical health go hand in hand in life in general, and it's no different on the football pitch. If you're physically drained, then mentally you're not fresh to make the decision. You're not fresh to look at and the, the kind of what you can do. It, you become it becomes more of a coping strategy rather than a creative and, and kind of front foot positive strategy. And that's that was the mindset that was pretty clear in the England team um, for for long periods of that you know the latter stages of that game that we, we were fatigued. Um, and as such, we didn't we didn't make the decisions that we'd be making our tournament when we were fresh. We we weren't making the runs. We were when, we, for example, later on in the game when we were looking to deliver balls into the box, we were hitting straight balls into the box. Our players were starting flat-footed with no movement. So instead of perhaps standing a ball up on the penalty spot and, and, and expecting everyone to go deliver, the, sorry, everyone to go attack the ball, everyone just stood. And, and from a standing start, it's much easier for a defender or a goalkeeper to, to, to win that situation. So we, we just didn't think, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't, we struggled to deal with the, the stress, the anxiety, I guess, of the situation and the fact that our bodies were dying. And, you know, this is a young team um, who had given absolutely everything. Uh, and Croatia, you know, they, they, I underestimated their physical conditioning. Um, I felt that uh, they, they would time we wouldn't, and actually, actually it was the other way around. Croatia got stronger mentally, physically they they, they they never looked like waning, if I'm honest. While our boys, you know, frankly were out on their feet, and that, that showed not only in their physical performance but also their mental um, capacity and their decision making. Um, so it was a, it felt like a little bit of an inevitable process after after they equalised, and possibly even before they equalised, if I'm honest. Um, but you know you've got to give a huge amount of credit to Croatia. They were they were really really tough. Really really. I mean you know you wouldn't want to meet these boys in the dark alley. They 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 they're really streetwise. I thought the referee was poor. Uh, never want to talk about referees from a from a coaching perspective in terms of my own teams, um, because I think you've got to take a, you know you've got to deal with what you can deal with. Um, but it's easy. But I'm I'm happy from that, from my perspective here as a fan and an onlooker to say that I thought the referee probably. You know, 90% of the key decisions seem to go Croatia's way. Um, maybe there's a little bit of national bias in there, but if you look at um, sort of some of those decisions, you know, Deli Ali particularly got caught um, down on the, on the left side of the pitch 
either late in the game or early in the extra time. It was a really naughty tackle, and uh, they, I, I don't even think he even gave a foul for it. Um, the balls that went out of play clearly would have been corners, could have led to a set piece and a goal for us. So, you know, if you look at it dispassionately, and, and the referee reviews his performance, you know, I thought it, it, that went against England, but I wouldn't want to focus on that um, particularly, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure Southgate won't do such as, such as his manner and his style. Um, I don't think it'd be the right thing to do. Uh, so yeah, look, we ran out of steam. It was all the hallmarks of, a, of, a, of an inexperienced team um, against a, a, an, an experienced group. Um, it was that they needed it. They needed it, and they showed, they showed that in the way that they played. Um, we, we we probably needed it. We felt like we needed it, but we, we simply didn't have the legs. Um, so yeah, credit to Croatia, um, and uh, you know I think sometimes you've got to take your hat off. And so we came up against a really really tough team, um, and they certainly were, were much better than I expected them to be. Uh, albeit they've got two world class players in Rakitic and Modric who can manipulate the ball, who are very very intelligent in terms of um, the runs that they make, in terms of their use of the ball, uh, in terms of the the their ability to, to, to retain possession and maintain the pressure on the opposition by probing, by moving the opposition around. It's an awful thing. It's an awful thing to have to defend against when you're out on your feet uh, late in the game. So um, just on to what do we learn? Um, because that, that has to be, you know, amongst, we're all crying in our beer, we're all feeling that, that hangover of uh, England being knocked out of the World Cup, but, but in Southgate, the FA, the players, um, they, they, they've got to move on um, once it's sunk in, once the pain, once they've allowed themselves to kind of grieve a little bit about the, about the loss, um, they're going to look for, for the lessons. And uh, for Southgate, um, I'm really I'm really mindful here that I don't want to criticise Southgate particularly because uh, he's been um, an outstanding manager for this country. Um, and if I criticise him in any way, then I guess people you know, he could be accused of kind of shooting Bambi a little bit because such is, is, is everyone's kind of feeling for him. Um, the only thing I would say is, I, I think it'd be interesting for, for Southgate and Martinez to uh, to compare notes about their respective semi-final performances, because I, I felt that there was some similarities when we were kind of reflecting on it over a cup of tea this morning. Um, I think both sides were in the ascendancy in the early parts of the game. Both sides had more chances to, had, had chances to, to, to score um, that they'll probably regret. Uh, and, and they'll feel like if they'd have taken the game, could have taken a different, um, a different course. But both sides also struggled under the, the the stress and the anxiety of being put under pressure on the bigger stage. Both sides um, struggled to um, repeat movements, patterns, and decision making that they had done in, in other situations before uh, in, in the lead up to the game in the previous games. Um, and uh, when you're in a World Cup semi-final and, and you're looking for um, looking for an edge, I guess that's where ultimately you know winners and losers are, are determined. Uh, and both both Belgium and um, and England found that uh, found that difficult. Um, so I, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see what Southgate and Martinez would 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 kind of um, find about you know out of the discussion, comparing notes. Uh, for, for me, the, the big thing um, it was clearly that England didn't have a plan B. Um, the plan A was outstanding and got us to a point that none of us expected us to get to, for which everyone deserves a huge amount of credit, none more so than Southgate. Um, but I think he will obviously want to go into the next tournament situation or the, or the next competitive football, knowing that his team are able to flex, uh, have got the right type of players to be able to, 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 to change the plan. Um, and, uh, and and change it up if things aren't working because it, it was clear last night that um, and I think he said afterwards in the interview that I, I saw online that um, they, they, there was no clear um, alternative uh, they, no, they couldn't agree on the sideline between himself and his coaching staff on what 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 would, would have been the right course of action to change the game um, and I, for me because the players have been conditioned to play in this particular style, this particular formation, just something simple as an example, when you've got one side in front of a back three, so a pivot like Jordan Henderson, the, the amount of work he did was incredible. It was obviously, you know, he was fatigued and he was also carrying an injury by all accounts. But to change the dynamics from all, from one to two, playing in that area, you have to have certain traits, certain capabilities as players, and uh, in terms of the, the the profile of the side and. Uh, Modric and Rakitic, for example, if they they, they play a, a double pivot, they're intelligent enough in terms of their use of possession, their their understanding of when to when to advance and when to sit, 
uh, when to support each other, when to complement each other's movement is, is kind of second nature. They're so intelligent. And we're talking about two of the best footballers in the world here, two of the best midfielders in the world, without a doubt. But let's say you put Henderson and Dyer in there, for me, that that feels, you know, I kind of shudder a little bit when, when, I, when I say putting those two in there because they, they, they just don't have necessarily have the tactical or technical, certainly the technical um, capability to, to, to play in a way that would, would, would affect the game. Um, they might be there as blockers, as stoppers, the last 10 minutes, you put them on there to, to, to add security, you ask them both to sit, ask them both to defend space and, and ask the opposition to come and break them down, that's fine. But when you're trying to impact the game and find a different way to play forward, um, I, I, I personally feel like you know Southgate's insistence on working on plan A probably worked against him a little bit in that the players and, and himself probably didn't have clarity on, on any alternatives um, and that's partly to do with the profile of players as well so but again I, you know, I really love to criticise Southgate who did such an, such an outstanding job um, and in terms of the players that, that they will learn so much um, from this experience obviously they'll gain a huge amount of confidence their profiles will have gone through the roof but uh, I, I I think the big thing that they have to learn from yesterday's game was how did they react when they were under pressure, how did, when that period of panic set in midway through the second half, when Walker and Trippier and Stones and you know the, the, those players in particular seemed to their body language and their reactions to each other's movements, you know, someone took an extra touch. Uh, I think it was at the moment where the ball dropped on the edge of the area and uh, the three players who left it for each other and then ended up, you know, panic and Stones tried to slash the ball out of play and then, you know, we nearly conceded. Pickford made a couple of decisions which, you know, to go punch um, the ball uh, and also in that situation I just described there where he, for the first time in the tournament he looked, uh, he looked like he was not decisive um, and then they all look around and blame each other. Um, for the, so for the first time you get the negative body language, you get the negative reactions and the blame passing rather than we got it wrong, let's make it better next time. So, you know, they, they reacted in that situation slightly, slightly, you know, uh, like, like the inexperienced players they are at international level um, and they'll learn, they'll, they'll analyse that and hopefully they'll compare their reactions with the way the Croatians reacted to every situation. So the Croatians pushed um, the, into the game management, uh, the physical side of the game to the limits within the referees and they, they judged the referees tolerance for that really, really well um, and I thought um, you know, they, they, they look like a really experienced streetwise team out there and we look like a bunch of young kids who, who were just getting on top of us. Um, but you know that side, the players, you know, they're, they're going to grow. They're going to grow so much, or as a result of that, they're going to grow. But they're going to grow so much because of the confidence, because of what they've done. They continue to repeat what they've done uh, in terms of their, their performances. Then um, they're, they're going to go on to great things. And uh, I'm really, really optimistic about the future of English football as a result. The one thing I'll say that on, on the flip side to that is that we, we still lack as a nation the profile of player um, to, to to allow us to change the game up a little bit. Um, uh, or to allow uh, the, the tactical uh, changes that perhaps would, would, would have enabled Southgate to get hold on the game again. Uh, so, you know, we're still, if you look at our midfielders, we, we don't have uh, the technical capability and uh, many, many people have commented on this. This is where probably the criticism of the likes of Jordan Henderson comes from and, and I get it, you know, I, I get it. We, we, but Southgate and, and Henderson have, have worked with what they have and they've got you know, they've squeezed so much out of the orange with, with that in this World Cup that you, know, you have to give them huge credit. But moving forward in terms of talent ID and in terms of talent development in the UK, we need to find players who are techni technically better in midfield um, to manipulate the ball, to manipulate possession and, to, um, and to, to allow us to have a slightly more kind of creative balance in that area of the pitch. Our creative influence really is about our athleticism and, and the great um, coaching, great work done on the training grounds for, for those players to complement each other's movement um, and for us to, to spot passes. We also need to be able to show technical excellence in manipulating the ball in front of a, in front of a, a, a deep block, in front of a team that uh, will not allow us to run in behind. Um, and so we need to have that quality in tight areas, um, the quality of receiving, the quality of first touch, the quality of pass. Uh, and at the end, Modric last night obviously put on a masterclass uh, in, in that respect, even if you know, I reiterate, for me, it didn't create very much for a long, you know, certainly the vast majority of the, the, the ninety minutes. Uh, so that's just something for, for us as a nation to, to look at, um, which will allow someone like Southgate to have a plan B and a plan C. Fingers crossed in the future. It could even be his plan A is is, is dictated by the, the emergence of better players. Uh, so. 
that's that's all I've got to say in terms of the analysis and the the way I saw the game and the way I saw the performance. Um, what all that's left for me to say is, um, <clears throat> like so many other England fans, the one word um, that uh, describes the way I feel about the whole tournament and about the, the England team in Southgate is proud, very very proud um, that the three lines. Um, uh, have, 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 the, the shirt with three lines on has been worn by those boys, by the, the, the coaching staff, um, because they've represented our country in a way that um, none of us expected them to, um, that gave us a feeling that none of us expected to get, um, and uh, they conducted themselves with incredible um, good grace, um, uh, set amazing examples for, for the next generations, um, uh, millions watching at home, young kids who, as I say, will now be looking at this England team and thinking, you know, I want, I want to be like John Stones, I want to be like Jordan Pickford, I want to be like Jordan Henderson, I, I, I love that, I think there's, there's nothing, there's no better way to, to connect uh, the country's football and community than to have the youngest players in that community aspire to be like the elite players in that community. And, um, and, and coaches likewise, you know, I've read some amazing, amazing comments about Southgate, um, and yeah, if that if you're a coach um, and you aspire to be a better coach, now you're going to aspire to be a better coach, partly because of Gareth Southgate, and that's great for the future of the English game. Um, uh, I think uh, the people outside football will view football slightly differently in our country because of that man, um, and uh, and his impact and his calm, um, but really, really. Um, really considered leadership style uh, has had an impact on all of us, none more so than well, I've said none. It certainly has had on, had on me. Um, he's, you know, I, I underestimated him, I, um, like most people did. Uh, certainly never been a critic. He's been, not, I'm not going to say he's been one of my heroes, but you know, being a Middlesbrough captain, lifting the only, tr the only trophy in Middlesbrough's history as a Middlesbrough fan, um, he's always going to have a place in my heart. Um, but I, I, I never expected the guy to to become such an influential leader uh, and to achieve so much. Um, but let's not give him a knighthood immediately. Let's not, um, let's not stick him up there to, to knock him down. Let's just let him get on with his job because he's doing an incredible job. Let him continue to influence the, you know, the, the game of football in, our, in, in England. Um, let him continue to uh, have the quiet messages that hopefully then are, are, are kind of um, disseminated out to, to the rest of the footballing world uh, and, and outside the footballing world about um, this positive journey that he started and I'm sure that his view once all, all the dust has settled and he's had a chance to reflect, uh, I think that's the way you've got to view it, it's, it's the start of a journey, um, absolutely not the end um, and uh, let's hope there's more talented players that come through to complement this group, uh, let's hope that the England fans uh, who've had such a great summer watching this team um, stay with this team and, and hopefully that their numbers swell. Uh, let's hope that the authorities, the, the, the FA, uh, everyone capitalises on this opportunity to, to, make, um, to make the game uh, right at the forefront of everyone's mind and all the positive things about the game. Forget, forget the negatives. Let's, you know, we all know we can talk about those for, for, until the cows come home, but let's just talk about the positives. It's just an incredible World Cup campaign. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, when I look back and I think, I'm thinking literally now, I, you know, I, I'm... It's, it's been a really emotional journey for, for everyone um, and uh, I'm sure those players uh, and the people in that dressing room last night um, will get their, their chance um, to receive the plaudits that they all undoubtedly deserve. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it um, and uh, we'll all sit back and watch the final on, uh, on, on Sunday probably thinking, uh, of course, with, with a slight tinge of disappointment that it's not us, um, but hopefully you will reflect on it and think, um, uh, this has been um, this has been a, a great great experience. So, all right, uh, let's look forward to the upcoming football season now. See you soon, guys.